Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Nominals here. In this video, we are going to be talking about why a good UV layout is so important. Now, this might sound like a really dry topic, but this is going to save you so much time throughout your texturing career. Before we get into this, I just want to show you a quick example of something I worked on some years ago. This is a film I worked on where I was doing a lot of concept sculpting and some modeling on it, where we have a giant tree. And in order to texture this one, you have to do a lot of wood texturing. And if you're going to keep projecting everything on here, like just take the photo and rotate the photo all around in 3D and project it, you're going to be spending all your time on that. So instead of doing that, we can do the UVs in a very smart way, which simply just means that you can cut down the cost of texturing by around half. It's really interesting how much uh, how much you can speed up texturing if you, do, you have a good UV layout. So let's jump into Blender. Now we are using Blender here, but this video works for everything. UV layouts or UVs is completely software agnostic. If you want to, um, if you if you want to texture efficiently, you should really consider UV mapping to be the first step. I've seen so many people, both professionals and students, who just regard UV mapping as another step you kind of do, where you select some seams and you unfold, and now you just call it a day. But if you make an inefficient UV layout, you are just causing so much pain for your texture artist. Let's take a look at this example here. So here we have something similar to the tree before. Let's say you want to texture up a tree really quickly. And with this UV layout here, you are in for a lot of pain. Here we just have an image which has been tiled across a few times. And you can see here that the, um, the wood grain is completely the wrong way. The texture, the, den the texture density is all wrong. So this has a different density than this. So you would have to go in and, and really project on this. Everything is wrong with this tree. So really, if you wanted to texture this, the really the, the best way for this would go in with the image of the bark here and project this and project this everywhere. And this gets really complicated, particularly with these kind of shapes here, which you might not have like four branches, you might have 60 branches and you have to do this really quickly. So the way we should really do this, if you want to be efficient when it comes to texturing is to make a good UV layout. Let's take a look at this guy. The only difference between these two models is the UV layout. Here you can see the wood grain follows really nicely all the main shapes. It goes up and down and it follows the branches around here and it goes same here and same with all these guys down here as well. You obviously still have the seam because you know you can't do magic. This is just where the UV seam actually is. So if you were to texture a tree like this, really the only thing you would have to change here would be to, you would have to to uh, paint out the seams here. So instead of projecting the entire the, projecting the entire tree, you would just have to fix the seams. This is going to cause this is going to cause you to speed up UV mapping or texturing so much. You could even be sneaky about it and and maybe around the seams here you could have leaves or you could have vines or something if you really don't want to do it. Let's say you want to you want to procedurally texture like 400 trees, you might not have time to fix this. And hell, for something far away, this might work perfectly fine because you can't necessarily see it. So how do you how do you make sure this actually follows? The way I always do this is I just go into um, uh, into the UV editor, select everything, and then I just start to rotate these pieces around so that they will flow. If we hit the L key, just so we can uh, and set this to uh, set this to UV, we can now just select one piece, and then I simply just select the piece and I just rotate it around so that it um, so that it, it, it flows in a nice direction. This is where I'm not too fussed about the um, it does it do we optimize UV space perfectly a lot of times in let's say you're in a case like um, this, you would really like rotate them around like, um, like puzzle pieces, you, just, you know, just to make them really fit together. Let's say you were to uh, to do this where they now perfectly fit together, you might get more texture resolution out of this, but you're not getting more texture speed out of this. It means now if you were to, to texture a UV map like this, you would have to fix each branch. So the way I like to think about this is um, you can optimize for human editing, meaning or human reading, 
a human speed, meaning that it's fast to you to actually texture this asset. Or you can optimize this for fast computing. Now, obviously, if you're doing a game asset, you will have to optimize for the computer. Then you throw a lot of human misery at it and you just spend the extra time to texture this asset. But if you're doing a personal piece or you do anything which doesn't require you to run crazy frame rates, then I highly recommend that you go in and you, you really optimize this for for uh, for you to texture. So now you can see just by rotating this piece around, it now follows the, the wood grain now follows the topology really nicely. Obviously, you don't want to have like overlaps. You know, we're not talking about doing shitty UVs. We're just <laughs> talking about doing, you know, nice and easy UVs. Yeah, and this is one of the luxuries that we have in film where, like even, even in film, you're still encouraged to try to optimize your, your UV space as much as possible. But if you throw in an extra UDIM, here and there it doesn't really impact much like it, most of the time the time you spend trying to optimize your uv layout in terms of space i mean that's time you could spend on other things just you know move your your uv shell over to the next udem and then you have more space to play around with and you don't have to fiddle with the puzzle as much this is something similar we did something similar for this for uh for pacific rim i remember when we we're making the teeth for all the kaiju and the way we set it up was that we used the same UV, uh, sort of the same, the exact same UV shell for all the teeth. The teeth were slightly altered, you know, but they had the same topology. But the shape was slightly different, but they had the exact same UVs, which meant that, you know, we wanted to texture them in a smart and efficient way. So because they all shared exactly the same UVs, we could just take the same texture for each tooth and then sort of move it over to the next tooth. And then you could go you could go in on that one tooth, for example, and, and and just vary the texture a little bit, change the color, add some grunge that wasn't on the other teeth. But it, it gave you a base for for all the teeth, basically. Yeah, I really can't express how important the UV mapping is for texturing. It really is the first step of texturing. And imagine you have to texture every single tooth. And like in in like your case for Pacific Rim, how many teeth did he have? It's like a uh, hundred, two hundred yeah, teeth. Something crazy. He had like but also because like, like I was I was doing Raijin, right? And and mm. Raijin had a mouth with teeth. But Raijin also had like a face shield with teeth. Uh, so I, I don't know it's just there's so many teeth there are just too many teeth <laughs> yeah it was it was definitely too many but this is this is a common practice even if like so i've been doing a lot of a lot of uh costumes for film right so doing a lot of stuff in marvelous designer and and the nice thing about marvelous designer is that it gives you the perfect uv layout when you export out of marvelous because well it's 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 the clothing you know it's it's how everything is put together it's what uvs are are based on it's like how we do clothing basically and you can really quickly run into a problem there if you don't think about how things are going to be textured oftentimes when you have clothing for it doesn't matter if it's for film or games you have you have a pattern that runs through the the fabric let's say you have uh, some grain that run down that runs down your pants right those that grain has a direction to it that grain isn't just the same vertically and horizontally it might be more pronounced running vertically so it runs down the pants so you want to keep that in mind and have directionality in mind when you when you do your uv layout because it 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 matters a lot especially to the texture artist so if you can talk to if you're in production you can talk to whoever is doing the textures after you consult with them to figure out how they would like the uv layout to be to speed up their workflow yeah, if you are doing a bit of fabric and you have uh, good UVs, you literally just apply a, <laughs> yeah. a texture map to it with some fabrics and you're good. If you don't have it, it's going to take you hours or days to texture it. We also have another example here, which is more equivalent to what we had with uh, a Monster Calls, which we mentioned beforehand. This is very similar. This is just one of my personal models. And in this case here, similar to the tree, we want... Well, similar to yeah, similar to the tree before. We now want this to flow nicely, and in this case, nothing flows nicely. This would be a real pain in us to texture. But if we again were to just fix this, by you can just fix it by turning on our button here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, magic that's, button. That's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works. Now you can see it flows really nicely. 
So I, I would really, really recommend that you do this. You can see it, it really flows nicely when it comes to the muscles as well. And uh, you could even like, like texture it here where you know which image you're going to be using as a tile and you can just take this here and you can just move it around a little and you can start to rotate it and you can just see how the effect is so different let's say you want this here to be a bit more twisted like this you can just do this and now you can see we get it to be more twisted or maybe a bit more interesting so yeah that that's really it when it comes to why a uv a good uv layout is so important for speeding up texturing it also means here you know if you if you don't want to texture you can really just do some clever tricks when it comes to the uv layout and you don't really have to do anything else for this piece if you were to have a good a good bump speckler roughness and a good color map you probably don't really have to do a whole lot when it comes to actually texturing this asset grant that you're going for a tree monster a, tr a tree monster <laughs> or you know groot or something or groot the two tree monsters in film right now so that's uh you could do that so yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.